Have you ever toyed with the idea of using a studio driver as opposed to a game ready driver? Well, today you're in luck, because that's exactly what I'm going to be testing. A studio driver versus a game ready driver, and lo and behold, they're both 535.98. So sit down, strap in, let's go. So a good place to start this video would be for me to define what a game ready driver is and what a NVIDIA Studio driver is. I'm sure most of you already know, but then again, for those of you that clicked on this video and don't know, let's get to it. So once you head to your browser, go to YouTube, look for laptop tweaking tips, and if you're not subscribed as of yet, I will look for you. I will find you. And I'll beg you. But anyways guys, um, on the official NVIDIA drivers page, when you add in all your details here, you have an option under download type. You either can download a game ready driver or you can download a studio driver. So guys, it's pretty self-explanatory, but game ready drivers are typically aimed and geared towards gamers. It's got the day zero best tweaks for whatever game is launching at that time to give you the best gaming experience now nvidia doesn't get it right every single time but there have been some real good bangers this year particularly 528.02 and i really love this latest driver 535.98 or the game ready version of it in any way and then the nvidia studio drivers as you can guess are geared towards creatives so just to read this here, NVIDIA Studio Drivers provide artists, creators, and 3D developers the best performance and reliability when working with creative applications. So guys, if you're a gamer, stick to Game Ready. If you're a creative, try out NVIDIA Studio Drivers because you're not gonna get the best performance with the NVIDIA Studio Drivers. And at that, let's get to my results. Was after all, that's why I clicked on this video. So all my games were tested at medium settings. Where FSR 2.0 or 2.1 was available, I used the quality setting. With the exception of Returnal, my poor little laptop is severely underspecced for Returnal. So I used the low settings preset with FSR set to balanced. And then as well as Resident Evil 4 Remake, uh, the settings are very complicated there. So I just leave it on... Uh, whatever I came on, which is a mixture of medium, high, and low, with FSR set to quality. Everything else is medium. Guys, I do all my testing on single player games, offline, no online. Um, my, I don't have a lot of space on my computer. In fact, my computer is running out of space at the moment, so it's difficult for me to add in games that I don't actually play. Uh, and then lastly, I do test on a GTX platform. I've got a GTX 1650 laptop. Your results may vary. If you've got an RTX laptop, just bear that in mind. And then lately, uh, lastly, obviously I'm using the latest NVIDIA driver, Game Ready Driver 535.98, as you can see over here. And then also 535 NVIDIA Studio Driver over here to do my benchmarks. So guys, for my game ready driver, I have tested this quite a couple of times lately. So these results should look familiar to you. Over 10 games, I added up all the average FPS's and my total FPS of 10 games was 647. When I divide that by 10, my average FPS per game was 64.7. Uh, and then I did the same thing for the 1% lows. Added up all the 1% lows, over 10 games, my my total 1% lows were 490 and then when I divide that by 10 my average 1% low per game is 49 so when I divide the 1% lows by the average FPS it gives me a stability percentage for the game ready driver 535.98 over 10 games of 75.73% which is a fantastic result I really do like this driver especially the game ready driver because when I did the same thing for the studio driver, over the 10 games, my total FPS was 641. So you can see there's a slight little decrease in average FPS. And then when I divide 641 by 64 point, by 10, I get 64.1 average FPS per game. And then when I do the same for the 1% lows, 
add up all the 1% lows. My 1% lows on this NVIDIA Studio Driver 535.98 was 478 over 10 games. So you can see there's already a bit of a drop in 1% lows. So my average 1% low per game was 47.8. And when I divide 47.8 by 64.1, my, uh, my uh, stability on a NVIDIA Studio Driver was 74.57%. So guys, as you can see, the NVIDIA Studio Drivers don't perform terribly, but they do lose out in average FPS as well as 1% lows. And as much as uh, people can tell your uh, NVIDIA Studio Drivers perform better, I've never found that to be the case. Studio Drivers are serviceable at best, but they start lagging, especially in the 1% low department. Because as you can see here, uh, lower average FPS, lower 1% lows, and when I divide the 1% lows by the average FPS, I get a lower stability percentage as well. And that is why I recommend as much of chunk as NVIDIA has been putting out lately, game ready drivers, if you're a gamer, is 100% the way to go. I wouldn't recommend studio drivers. Look, you may find that you are the one in a million case where a studio driver works better with your machine. But generally I find if you're a gamer, stick to game ready drivers. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comment section. Guys, if you're still watching and you haven't subscribed as of yet, now's the time to do so. But as always, it's people like you that make a difference in this world. Have a fantastic evening. Cheers.